Jackson Radio Show. Welcome back, everybody. Kevin Jackson here. It's the Kevin Jackson Show. KJRadio.com. We're watching, listening to the clock tick. And I'm asking you, tick-tock on your life. Marshawn Lynch went to Mexico, played a football game there, st- took a knee during an American National Anthem and stood for the Mexican National Anthem. Thanksgiving Day. What are your thoughts? You happy about that? Marshawn Lynch is protesting being a black American while he's in Mexico, honoring the Mexican national anthem and disrespecting ours, disrespecting the very people who gave him that opportunity. What would this guy be doing without football? He'd be a dishwasher. He'd be a street thug. He wouldn't be washing dishes. He'd be a street thug. I don't know much about him, but I don't need to know much about him. He told me all about him when he took a knee in a foreign country. Embarrassed the United States, embarrassed himself, embarrassed his team, embarrassed his teammates, embarrassed his coach, embarrassed everybody. But you know what? I'll take it personally. Because I know there are people out there who are willing to die for freedom. They would trade for Marshawn Lynch. They would trade for a fraction of his life. You want to know where they are? The very, the very place where he was in Mexico. There are people who looked at him and said, are you out of your mind? You're disrespecting the American flag standing for hours and we want out of here. I tell you what, black folks, if you're listening to the program and you're a leftist, we're, you want out? <laughs> There's a Mexican that wants in, I guarantee you. Where else do you think they want in? All of Africa wants in. You can't name a country that we don't have somebody from Africa living in the United States thankful to God that they're here and not there. You want to live in the Middle East? I joked uh, with friends of mine over the holidays, some sassy women folk. I said, hey, we're going to banish you guys to the Middle East. You'll come back correct. (laughs) Their husbands laughed, of course, joking. Wouldn't banish good conservative women, but you do get what I'm saying. There are places in this world you don't want to be. And there's a song, you never know what you got until it's gone. Well, let me tell you something. Marshawn Lynch, I'd love for you to live in Mexico without your football salary. Let's see how well you fare. Hmm. I still think about that Korean soldier. Dramatic scene unfolded 4 p.m. on November the 13th. Tensions among three countries that soared. The United States, South Korea, Team 1, the North Koreans. Kim Jong-un has his nuclear bombing uh, underground facility fall in and kill a bunch of people. But he's still a threat, right? He still wants to threaten. Fat boy North Korean calls Donald Trump a crazy old man, that kind of thing. So we got tensions high, DMZ, whatever the parallel is, <laughs> out there. And, and suddenly, we have a situation where a North Korean soldier takes his vehicle, blows through the checkpoint, tries to drive across into South Korea, gets close enough, and puts his faith in the good Lord that he probably can't even pray to. And God saw fit to deliver him into the hands of the South Koreans and he survived. And I, I talked earlier in the broadcast about how he survived. Five gunshots. He collapses on the South, South Korean side of the joint security area. The only place where the North and South Koreans directly face each other. Two soldiers from the joint command then crawled to the man while others in the unit mod, uh, monitored what was happening. They see this playing out. And they understand what he's doing. They understand the gravity of this situation and these guys spring into action. He's being fired upon and he makes his, I mean, I swear you got to see this video. (laughs) This dude is running for his life and he's running fast. I'm trying to think of a situation where I did something like, I don't want to call it superhuman, but like you did something like, how did I do that? And I can't recall. I know there's been at least two in my life where I was like, wow, how did I, you know, like that, like God intervened or your muscles move fit faster than you even thought you could move that kind of thing. 
Well, let me tell you, I watched the video of this guy, and I dare Usain Bolt to, to for them to overlap Usain Bolt at the fastest point in his race, and you put it next to this little Korean dude. He was flying. It was like he was lifted on the the winds of a a, a hurricane. Man, it was something to see. So he ends up on the on the south side, and. Five, he's been shot five times. He's got intestinal worms. He's he's a, he's got tuberculosis. He's got Hep C. And there were people that crawled to him, not knowing anything about him, and they rescued him, putting themselves in harm's way. For the record, think about this: if he had been able to just walk across the border between North Korea and South Korea as an illegal immigrant, he would have been bringing that with him. Now, we obviously show special dispensation to this guy because he's escaping for his life. He goes back, he's dead, and you saw what they were trying to do. You don't end up with five bullet holes because they want to just, you know, capture you. (laughs) So he's in the hospital, he's got all these things wrong with him. And this is all because he wanted freedom. And I think back on these stupid football players. And I think to myself, I'd love to trade one of you. I'd love to trade Marshawn Lynch for this guy. I'd love to trade Colin Kaepernick or any of the other uh, players that feel like they need to take a knee or raise a fist in defiance of America. Otto Warmbier, I bet he would have traded if he were alive. Frat boy prank landed him in North Korean prison and he was sentenced to 15 years of hard labor. He spent the better part of a year there. Barack Obama couldn't get him out. President Trump got him out only so he could die on American soil. Some people might say, what's the big deal? The symbolism of it is a big deal. One president left the man behind. Said he wouldn't and he did. One president left four people to die in Benghazi. I defy any leftist to tell me what they think Donald Trump would have done if we had people in, stuck in at a, at a, a, a it's not a consulate, yeah, a consulate office, whatever, in Benghazi, and what Donald Trump would have done. They wouldn't have had to make a movie called 13 Hours, I can bet you that. So, some leftist tweeted something along the lines of, so what, North, North Korea is a, a, a crappy country, so is America, and I don't see a difference. And one of my friends tweeted, the fact that you can say that in America is the difference, because you couldn't say it in North Korea and not end up in prison doing a hard time. And I've already told you, how many people treat their military to where the dude's got hep C, he's got tuberculosis, worms in his belly, three different types of worms. Not a flu, not just one, like he's got a fluke worm or a hook worm. He's got three different types of worms and he's malnutritioned. And that's the best of them. You think that army is ready to go against us? I mean, come on, think for yourselves for just a minute here. Le- leftists? I'm not talking to my conservatives, I'm talking to the lefties. 132 pound, underweight, malnourished guy. On the road to recovery, but he's still tormented by the nightmares of being shipped back to that cruel regime. Waking up to nightmares. Forget hep C and tuberculosis and the bugs that are crawling around inside of him. He doesn't want to go back. That's his biggest fear. Don't feed me. Don't give me water. Don't send me back. If I want to die, let me die here. I don't think he's going to die. Anyway, the border guards that are that were protecting this guy, do you even want to put a guess as to what's going to happen to these guys? They've been replaced. They fortified the section of the border where this guy escaped. Unbelievable. They they dug a deeper trench. They put up trees or something to where you can't drive through it or barriers and what have you. Shoveling a deep trench, they said. Had so- soldiers standing guard over it. It's unbelievable. The ambassador to Korea, his name is Mark Knapper, said uh, they showed showed these guys digging the trench, and 
They knew it was North Korean, what they call them, JSA guards. Failure is not tolerated. Public embarrassment on a global scale is what happened to North Korea. So what do you think is going to happen to the all the guys who allowed this to happen? That guy that, even though the guy blasted through that, uh, you know, through that checkpoint, all the guards, everybody that let him get away, that fired a shot at him, these guys are dog food now. They're very, they're lucky if they get to go to prison. Not San Quentin, not Leavenworth. North Korean prisons, like Auschwitz. But there's not going to be a patent that's going to ride to the rescue and save them. And I want to, maybe Kaepernick could have saved them, huh? Look at that. Kevin Jackson on the Black Sphere Radio Network. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS or state? The secret to avoiding the IRS nightmare is to seek professional representation. My friends at Security Tax Associates provide the most cost-effective and ethical representation in the industry while helping to avoid seizures, levies, and wage garnishments. Security Tax Associates is here to ensure that the appropriate steps are taken to permanently eliminate any possibility of future tax burdens once and for all. For a free, no-obligation consultation, contact Security Tax Associates, 844-779-4177. That's 844-779-4177. 844-779-4177. Or visit them at securitytaxassociates.com.